King Schools had a number of announcements yesterday, including a very welcome scholarship announcement. I've really enjoyed watching. It's been, what, six years now? Six with years with NAFI and another, I think, five years with WAI. Yeah. It's been wonderful to watch the effect the, com the company has had individually, but let's look at it globally. We're here to welcome Barry Canoodala, who is, of course, the uh, incoming king of King Schools and will be over a period of time uh, taking over for John and Martha who have given so much to this industry and make a long story short, I don't know that aviation would have been the same without them. Oh, I agree with you, Jim. They've made a great impact uh, throughout the years and, and on me personally as well. I started out with King Schools as many of our employees have as well and, and we're all fans as well as employees and uh, we love what we do and we love carrying it on into the future. Barry, tell me, you had some comments yesterday about certain directions the company was taking, especially in regards to flight schools and institutional flight programs. Sounds pretty aggressive. Yeah, one, one of our growing parts of our business is really working on the B2B world. Uh, traditionally, King Schools has been a B2C uh, firm. We've uh, done a lot of direct marketing. Most of our customers have, have responded to ads that we've made and we've put out. But these days, the uh, with the pilot shortage coming about and so on, more and more of our customers are coming through flight schools and colleges and universities. And we're looking at ways to serve that market much better. And that was the basis of the announcements that we made yesterday is how can we help those flight schools to better serve their customers? And in particular, Particular, how can we help flight schools, especially ones that are starting up to take advantage of the pilot shortage and trying to fill that pipeline of pilots, how can we help them to achieve Part 141 certification? Because that's really one of the keys to flight schools, to be able to fulfill that pipeline and be able to produce good pilots and also to serve those pilots better by allowing them to qualify for uh, educational assistance, whether that's student loans or VA benefits or so on. All those programs require the flight schools to be Part 141 certified. But as you know, that's not an easy process. And we can help because we have staff that have done it. They've been there. They've done it. Brian Huff, in particular, has run uh, many flight schools. And now he's our senior vice president of business development and sales. And he's offering this service, which we call the concierge service. And the concierge service basically says, you give us a call, and we'll help you free of charge to write a TCO, which is the basis, the application, to become a Part 141 certified flight school and Brian has run uh, flight schools and has done many of those TCOs. He knows exactly what's required, he knows what to put in and he knows more importantly even what to leave out and uh, so he's offering that service free of charge through King Schools to help these flight schools achieve Part 141 certification as well as just advice in managing their business and we call that a concierge service. So that, that was the announcement that was made yesterday. It's available free of charge to any flight school whether or not they're currently using King products. It's just offering our expertise to the industry to help them move forward and serve their customers better. Well, the kind of transition you're talking about for a small flight school looking to work its way up, or for that matter, a small institutional program working the way it's up, it, it's fraught with complexity because you're dealing with alphabet soup, the uh, complexities of bureaucracy, the regs, or this or that, and it's daunting at the beginning. It doesn't have to be necessarily, but with the kind of guidance you're talking about, that's got to make it a tremendously easier proposition. Well, I, I think that's true because you, you, you have a couple choices. If you're, if you're new to it, there's the process of beating your head against the wall and uh, maybe making your first submissions to your principal inspector, uh, operations inspector, or your POI, and having it rejected and turned back. And, and that doing that one time is fine. You do it once or twice and you start to get a reputation from the POI that may not be positive and they have a lot to do and you may not get as much help in the future as you want. Uh, if you submit a uh, TCO that meets the requirements and it makes that POI happy, you're really off to a good start because part of being a 141 approved school is that you're going to be inspected over time and that POI you're going to develop a really good relationship with them if you're successful and getting off on the right foot is key to that long-term relationship and that's what we're trying to help with. I saw with amusement because of my past experience, deep dark history of mine, your revision to the FOI course which is to me one of the 
most bizarre experiences of my flight career. The FOI was just, what? Yeah, well, there's, there's no doubt about it. The, the FAA has chosen on the FOI side to, to do something which is very, very valuable to flight instructors, and that is teach them how to teach. And so on the core concept, the FOI is a wonderful thing because you've got a lot of young kids that are coming up. They've never taught anything. So the purpose of it is to give them that background in teaching so that they understand that their responsibility is to be sensitive to the customer, understand how they're responding to the teaching, how they're absorbing the material, and how they may not be. What are the stumbling blocks? What are they having trouble with? And you have to be sensitive and empathetic to the student. And the, the FOI gives you the tools to do that. The problem with the FOI is that it's cryptic. And the FAA, the FAA has chosen to use very academic language. And the FOI test will test on that language in very specific terms. Like, you have to know the word automaticity. And that's, that's a word that nobody's ever even successfully pronounced. I mean, I may have gotten close that time. I'm not sure, but I've done it a few hundred times. I want to see you say it three times fast. Yeah, no, I won't even try it. But, but you have to know not, not just what that means to the student, but you have to memorize the word. Uh, complex overt response, you know, things like that, taxonomies. And really what we've tried to do is to go ahead and give that language because you need to have it in order to pass the test, but also go much deeper and, and provide what that means to you as a flight instructor and how you can help your students by understanding that teaching theory. Um, so it's a complex balance. But I think we've, we've struck a good one with the FOI, and we've taken that complex FAA uh, language and distilled it down to what a new flight instructor really needs to know about teaching and about how to recognize and create a relationship with their student where each student is treated as an individual. And you understand what you're looking for when they reach stumbling blocks, plateaus, and so on, and how you can help them to maintain motivation and become a, a really better teacher through the FOI. And that is possible, believe it or not. It may not seem like it when you read the uh, flight instructor's handbook in the FOI section that, that any of that can ever be applied, but it can. And, and through our FOI course, I believe we've, we've uh, reached a point where we can give you the tools that you need as a flight instructor. Some time ago, the Kings had designated you as pretty much the successor to a legacy that few have seen, uh, or the likes few have seen in aviation. How do you feel about carrying on something that pretty much has identified the concept of ground school and flight instruction from the standpoint of, either, well, it was videotape and CDs and online and so forth, but also evolved how we communicated? Well, that's a great question. I have to, I have to say I'm, I'm humbled and, and honored, uh, but at, at the same time, I'm a passionate flight instructor and passionate uh, pilot, and I love to fly. I love the community. I love our customers and what they're doing and how they respond to our products. So being able to carry on that uh, – I'll call it a legacy, but it's not a legacy because John and Martha are still – teaching, they're active, they're on camera, uh, they're, they're continuing on, but they're sharing that uh, spotlight a little bit and giving me the opportunity to uh, not only run the company, but to uh, teach in the video. And that, for me, is, is just an honor, is what I can say. And I'm, I'm doing my best to live up to their, their style of teaching uh, because I believe in it. It's worked for me. It's worked for our customers. And we will continue on to do that style of teaching. You'll see more instructors on our courses, and they'll all be held to that, that high standard that John and Martha have set and continue to set in Trailblaze. So, uh, so it's a wonderful thing for me. Uh, I've been... I'll have been 20 years with King Schools in July, starting out transferring the uh, products to online in the technology world, taking on marketing and eventually CEO. So it's been a progression over years and it's been uh, the, the best career uh, move in my life to go to work for King Schools. And it's, uh, I expect to continue on. I'm now as an, as an owner of the company. Um, I, I have a lot of responsibility to our customers and I'll continue uh, to make good products, ensure that we have the right people in the company and, and keep looking to the future for King Schools. Wow, what a tough act to follow. 
It is. It is. And then, and I look look in the mirror every day and say, you know, I'm I'm in an incredible position. I'm going to have to work hard to keep it going. I, I haven't changed my name yet to King Utila, but it, <laughs> it's a it's a possibility in the future. But uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's I take it seriously and and looking forward to a long future for King Schools. We expect to be sitting here interviewing, if not me, somebody else. You know, 20, 30 years from now, uh, and and who knows what that future is going to look like, but we're going to be there. Speaking of which, and my final question, what does the future hold for King Schools? What might we expect? Well, certainly a lot of new technology. And one of the big things that you're going to see from King Schools is new tools for flight instructors in particular. It's a passion of mine. It's a passion of everybody at King Schools to give flight instructors the tools that they need in order to help their students learn. And one of the areas, we're going to make some big announcements at Oshkosh, but I'll give you a little bit of a preview. And, and that is one of the things that we've realized is that our flight instructors need access to the courses that their students are using so that they can review those courses and be able to assist their students better. And we're, we're going to ensure that every flight instructor has access to King Schools courses uh, free of charge and also that they have the ability to very easily through technology means, uh, be able to track their their students' progress through their King courses. And that's, uh, that's something that's coming very soon. Uh, so I think you can see more tools like that, more leveraging technology in order to help in the learning process. Well, we can't wait to see it happen. It's been fun watching for many decades. Uh, I don't even want to think about how far back I go with looking at uh, your products and what you've done and how long we've known John and Martha and looking at the effect they've had over so many years. It's exciting to watch, but more important, the, uh, the portent of the future at this point is possibly the most exciting part of all, and we look forward to it. All right. Well, thank you very much, Jim. I appreciate you spending time with me today and, and spending time with you and your crew. Uh, you guys do wonderful things for uh, aviation, getting the news out. Thank you so much. Well, we're having fun. It was either this or get a real job, and we knew that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> All righty, folks, we have been speaking with Barry Canoodle from King Schools, the heir apparent, and more important, the guy who's going to be directing things into the future.